Hello, you lovely collection of sloppy neural networks. I'm Stephen White. This is Sonia Desereaux. And we are here on behalf of the Silton Foundation, which gives out $10,000 every year in dance scholarships, as well as being a nonprofit which you can donate to. You can check them out at uh, siltonfoundation.org. Exactly. Pretty yes. amazing. I want it. <laughs> so, the video that we have for you today, we're going to teach a fun little uh, novice intermediate slash combo here. On the lead side, we're going to be focused a lot on spatial conditioning for open to closed position, like how we work within the space that we have, either in a closed position or from an open one to a closed one. And we're going to be talking about hand pass-offs, how we correctly like move with a lead from hand to hand, rather than like completely disconnecting when we do a hand switch. Yeah? For the followers, there's going to be a lot of continuing with that energy, which we know is a baseline for West Coast Swing. A lot of rotation in the upper body to make sure you keep the point of connection. And expansion in the body to offer more pieces to your partner if they would like to use it. <laughs> so, starting off, we have just our basic handhold, right? My left follows right. We're going to act like we are going into a sugar push, but I'm going to be reaching across in contra on count two. So that's going to look like this. We're going to go back into our normal one. I'm going to be slightly elevating my hand just up to shoulder height, no higher. And I'm going to be reaching them across each other to count two. So I'm aiming for the follow's hand to get to my shoulder, my hand to get to the follow's shoulder. Depending on the height and body positioning, you may have to take it up top. I generally prefer to get the backs of my fingers to the side of the follow here. Now, I'm not going to release with this hand until I have a good contact with the right hand, especially before I start the rotation, I don't want to release too soon because this can clue the follow to do other things we don't want. So I generally will keep a hold of that left hand until I start to retract my right side. When I retract the right side, I'm going straight down the track we set up. So that's going to look like one, I make that connection two, now I start to retract and I'm going to do my regular triple here, right hand goes to the shoulder, three, and four. Well, let me show you that one more time, just to that count. Four, one, two, three, and four. You can see we both end up taking a little bit of a coaster triple on that back step there, and I'm once again in contra with my right side, prepping the follows right side forward. We'll show you that from this direction, we know the follows part. So that's gonna be one, prep, two, three, and four. Well, it's a very light lead, rotating through my bodies, my, bo my body. All of his bodies. All of my bodies. The ones <laughs> I keep in the closets, right? Leads trying to avoid this. It sucks. <laughs> uh, Alright, for the followers, a couple things here. Um, basic thing with the left arm, but for me it's stylistic, but it's also part of the technique. Every time I feel that my partner is lifting the arm, that tells me that some turn is going to happen. I don't want to keep this here. Every time I keep this hand down for a turn, it mostly gets me in an awkward position where it might be a closed position and now my arm is here. He doesn't have much also. He has my shoulder he can work with, but there's not much space or opportunities for him. So when I feel this, I lift my arm. I can lift it side here if I'm going to turn close to his body, but I want something that goes 90 degrees and opens um, in the upper body. So here I have one, start lifting the arm, two, I want to keep going with that energy forward, but I want to make sure I keep a little bit of rotation with that right side body back, so I keep that point of contact. If you just take the energy and you're too much in a hurry to go turn, I'm releasing everything and I'm out of connection. So here, lift the left arm, to keep going forward, but give him this connection. You're gonna feel the turn. Both arms stay here. There's more space for him to do something with my body if he wants to. Three, and I keep going backward and rotating. So my energy told me down the track and rotate. Keep going until the end where I should feel a redirection to the four. Here you see that my right side body is forward. So I know I'm prepping for another turn, keeping those arms 90 degrees here. Let's also show for the follows from this side. 
So here, look at the side body on two, feel the rotation, three, keep going back, rotate, and four, get the right direction forward, right side is in front, arms are still here. All right, so for our next part, once we've gotten to that prep on four, what we're gonna do, one and a two and a three and a four, I am going to unwind my arms as hard as possible and spin the follow like a hurricane. Yeah! Ah! Not exactly like that. That's going to be what ends up happening, but we're not going to just like yank it. So going back to that position, I'm going to give myself a little bit of an unwind from the position I'm in in contra. So right now I've got my left hoof forward and I've got my right other dainty hoof on the top of me forward. I'm going to get my left side over my left foot. That's going to give you all you need to get the follow to rotate. As we do that, the follow is going to have a triple down the track. I'm going to triple and hover right next to her. So that's going to look like triple step. I'm going to make sure by the end of that triple step, I'm catching that back shoulder. And that's going to end up going into a walk, walk timing. So that should be five and six. This should be seven where I'm getting the follow back into that left side. I'm getting back into that left side. And then we're going to prep to an eight for the next part where we're going to bring ourselves out of this position. So. The main thing I want to think of when we do this rotation, one, two, three, and four, as I do the rotation, I want to keep my hand close enough to the follow to catch the shoulder, but I don't necessarily want this to trace the entire time. Why, you might ask? It can probably get a little bit awkward for the follow to have somebody tracing over like the front of their neck or clavicle, and you definitely don't want to go lower. So, we want the arm to hover, but not necessarily trace. I'll show that from this side with the counts. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. I caught that there. Don't look at my footwork on that one. I was doing the advanced lead footwork for spacing purposes. We're gonna take that back to a seven, and then we're gonna release that prep onto the eight, which we'll get to in just a second. So. One more time from this direction for you, then we'll talk about the follows part. I'm just going to go all the way through. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight. Followers, remember when you're stepping in general, you're not going one, right? If I'm all the way forward, I'm out of connection. Super important for your rotation also, because you're going to miss a lot of the lead if you're too much forward. So this one, one, two, I'm already out. So put your foot down, start showing that you're doing a weight transfer on the timing, on the rhythm, but then go through your weight transfer as you're going through your two. So two on the little bit back, following the energy forward, and same thing, super important on your three and four. I'm out, he didn't do anything. And four, yeah, same thing as in a whip. So you know that part, so four, I get my turn on the five and six, triple rhythm, five. I keep my arms out. I stop my partner so I know what's happening. And I'm still going down the track. Six, I'm still going down the track. He put his hand, but this was not a stop. It's just to say, I'm here, we're about to do something. So I keep the rotation. Seven, wait for him to bring me on the eight. So here again, there's a lot of right side going into this connection so he can feel some stretch and know that I'm ready to be redirected on the eight. So I'll show that on the other side one time. One, take your time. Two, keep going with the energy. Three and four, take your time. Five and six, keep going. Seven, wait for the redirection. Eight. Good thing to think about when doing this two leads is if you uh, think about your redirections as providing resistance to the direction that the follow is going, and then redirecting from your foot, i.e., if we are on that count six and the follow is stepping back into seven, I'm letting the follow go the direction of the seven, but I'm providing resistance through the frame here, so we're slowing down to the seven. And then when I want the follow to go the other direction, I am using my foot, not my upper hoof. I'm using the lower hoof to be pushing from the ground to create that resistance. So as long as everything is congruent in my body, I'm going boop, and the follow is coming along with me. Now, we're gonna use that action, and I'm going to take this side back and reach across with this from seven, eight, so that we're gonna get the follow stepping towards us for a one and two. 
musically. We can say nine and 10, one and two, it's gonna be a triple step. As we do this, I'm gonna pass my left upper hoof to my right one, and that's going to look like this. One and two, and I scoop the follow into a closed position. From there, we can anchor it three and four. Jazz hands. So the big key point that we want on this, I'm gonna do it slightly at an angle so you can kind of see what's going on to the back here. So uh, try not to dance your West Coast swing on diagonals. It's not a great idea, but still. So we're going to go uh, seven, eight. I'm reaching across one. So I've already got my hand on the back. As we step into that and, I apply a little bit more resistance and. So now when we take the step to the side together, two, the follows right there along with me. So from the top, that's going to look like one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, one, and two. It can look a little, um, a little tossy when you do it quick. You just want to remember that you're trying to make sure that there's no gap between when this hand disconnects and the other hand connects. So I don't want to do this. Yellow. We have room for error there. I want to go lead in this way, catch and scoop that way, as far as what's happening with the hand there. If you need to practice that as a lead, highly recommend just take away the footwork, stand with a nice wide stance, use your body to rotate, body to rotate, body to rotate, body to rotate. Body to rotate. Feels kind of like you're practicing Kung Fu, it's fun. Feels really good for the follow. A uh, couple things for the followers here. So we're on the seven, we get resurrection on eight. I still have my arms around here, not by my side. This is helping me keeping some outward tone connection here. So I'm open here. My posture is not that open. <laughs> so seven, um, eight, I get my resurrection. Here, the reason why I like to bring my arm completely up is because of this hand. I know this is my closed side position. There's a big chance that we're gonna finish in a closed position. If my arm is in the way, it can get awkward. Or I, I can get to hit him, right? So I'm gonna bring my arm up. Now, this is not up. This is behind me, probably in his face. I have no idea where this is going. I wanna bring it close to my face as possible <laughs> without hitting myself. Seven, eight, I bring it up. I know he's behind me, I feel his hand, so I know I have this free space. Bring the arm up, it's by my side when I get to him, so there's no chance of me hitting him. I'm getting into this connection, still going down the track, and then I wait for him for this side step. Again, if you're too fast with your steps, you're gonna miss that side on two. So what I see happen a lot of the time is if I have my seven, eight, and you go too fast, one and two, you're gonna hit your partner, or get in the wrong space. So here, <laughs> mm, really up. Leads, this is also a reason I let that left hand linger a little bit forward in there. Either if the follow does the arm or if the follow is jumping ahead a little too soon. Eight, one, and <laughs> I got plenty of room that I can save myself. So here one more time, lifting the arm when I feel that hand in my back, looking where my partner is at, slowing down my timing, sideways to from here, you have the choice with your arm because you see where your partner is at. So you can bring it down sideways, you can bring it down behind the head, you can bring it down here, do all of these things like this until you get to your three and four so just one time from this side from the seven here seven eight one and two three and four so smooth and relax take you that uh we will do that all the way from the top from a couple different directions for you with a variety of counts so we've got ready and one going two go three and four turn it five and six Seven, eight, and one, and two, anchor three, and four. My new style. Jazz. <laughs> one more time, we got it ready. And walk, walk, triple step, triple step, walk, walk, triple step, triple step. And one last time for you. 
Well, two last times for you so we can cover all the bases here. You get the good view this time. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, one, and two, three, and four. Now you get the really good view this time. <laughs> Ready? And one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, one, and two, three, and four. This was for the Sultan Foundation. You can find them at thesultanfoundation.org. Again, nonprofit, you can donate. Or if you need financial aid to go to events, they're giving out passes and money for training. This was. Esteban Blanco. Y Sonia Desuro. Sí. <laughs>